Hello, how you doing? Hope you had a great Christmas and a great New Year's. I did too. It mine was rather quiet, but <laughs> you don't want to hear that. No. I'm here to talk about Quantum Leap, a show I enjoyed for the years it was on NBC, which starred Scott Bakula and Dean Stockwell. Now I read on Facebook that it's coming back. Not as a reboot, as a sequel. Kind of like Quantum Leap, The Next Generation. Well, I didn't hear much about it. I heard, they didn't say much about it. I mean, they just, I heard there were so many little details of what they could tell us. We don't even know how much Scott Bakula is going to be involved with the series. He said he would like to reprise his role as Sam Beckett. And sadly, they're since Dean Stockwell has passed away, we'll have to get a new hologram-like character. Well, I don't even know if, if they're going to... I don't know how they're going to go with the, the story. I mean, I don't know where the story's going to go. I don't know who's... If, I don't know if Scott Bakula is going to be a big part of the series or he's just going to be a minor part of the series. Uh, there might be a new Leaper. might be a new hologram. But... We'll have to see to come. Me, I'm looking forward. I would just love to see it, just to see how it turns out. It may be a big hit. It may be a big flop. Who knows? Just gotta keep your fingers crossed when it ha if if and when it happens. Now, the original Quantum Leap, which ran from '89 to '93 on NBC. I really enjoyed the series. I mean, you enjoy watching the adventures of Sam Beckett and Al Calavici played with such charm by D Scott Bakula and Dean Stockwell. I mean, those two had such awesome chemistry. <laughs> you know, you can create a hit show, you can create a good premise, but if you don't find the right actors to play these parts, the show is going to sink. And it's not every day you put two actors together and hope they're going to click. But surprisingly, Dean Stockwell and Scott Bakula clicked. You just love the friendship between them. They love the funny vibes, but talk funny vibes moments with them. You know, they would just... I love when Sam would get annoyed with Al's sex talk. <laughs> and all that stuff. And, um... I gotta say, the first episode of Quantum Leap I actually ever watched, unfortunately I didn't watch it from the beginning, I, is Kamikaze Kid. That episode where he leaps into Cam Wilson, uh, a hot rod, a, a, a teenager who fancies himself as a hot rodder, <laughs> and uh, in a, it was in the year 1961, the set looks like, uh, the set looks like a recycled set from American Graffiti. Probably was. It started then. Unknown Jason Priestley. He was a year away before he was known as. Brandon Walsh on 90210. As. One of the. Greaser characters. <laughs> well he meets. He, he discovers Cam's sister Cheryl. Is getting married to Bob. And they're going to the Peace Corps. But I love when Al says, and Al, you're supposed to keep Cheryl from Mary and Bob because, oh, but they look like the perfect couple. Yeah, well, that's just an illusion. And uh, the way he says it, well, yeah, well, Ken and Barbie grow up and all that stuff, and it turns out their marriage is quite unstable, and <laughs> he's, in a, he's a mean drunk. And, like, then Sam remembers that, suddenly remembers he has his sister was in an abusive marriage and uh, and he wished he could have done something to help her but and that's when he decides to if I don't stop Cheryl from marrying Bob it will be my fault okay I won't tell you any more about that episode you in case you haven't seen it oh I really like the effects of when he leaps in and out I mean 
Of course, it was kind of cheaply done in the first season, but by the second season, the, it kind of the leaping effects kind of improved more. <laughs> I love the blue lighting, and then you see the electricity pop when he's about to leap in and when he leaps out. <laughs> and now, I, when I finally did watch the first episode in reruns on it was on USA. I didn't know what to expect. I thought he was gonna, but it it kind of it's kind of like the Born Identity in a way. I mean, he's a mis Sam is a mystery to the audience and to himself because he leaps into this guy's body. This this test pilot called Tom Str named Tom Stratton. He uh, his memory gets part it's partially erased. So he doesn't remember anything. He knows some bizarre reason. He knows he's not this this pilot, but he doesn't remember who he is. <laughs> and in walks Al, <laughs> who's all well. He's a hologram to Sam, but but to Al, everything else in that time period is a hologram to him. <laughs> and then it kind of goes from. Uh, it, and it kind of, that's when the series begins. It was created by Donald P. Belsario, best known for creating the hit series Magnum P.I. starring Tom Selleck. And afterwards, he he also created the hit show shows JAG and NCIS. Quantum Leap like was like his first 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 trip in first trip into sci-fi land. <laughs> And he wrote it a very good, and the premise surprisingly worked. Now, Al, played respectfully by Dean Stockwell, started out as this, also started out as this fun-loving, goofy guy, but as the series went on, you, you get to know his tragic backstory. <laughs> I'll get to that in a moment. I always liked that whenever uh, Sam looked in the mirror, we see the we see the person of the body he's in but that's basically to show the audience what everyone else sees i mean when he's in that body we the audience see sam but but the people in that time period see a totally different person that's just to show the audience and where does that person he leaps into go they go in the waiting room in the future simple when Sam stepped in the quantum leap accelerator, he switches bodies with that person. That person's waiting in the, is in the waiting room in Sam's body, and Sam's in their body in that time period. Well, throughout throughout the most of the series, we keep hearing about the waiting room. <laughs> Until the first episode, we finally did see the waiting room is when Sam leaped into. A younger version of a, Al as a young man. I mean, Al as a young man, uh, and that's the first time we saw the waiting room because we see young Al in Sam's body. <laughs> oh, I gotta tell you an interesting that episode where Sam and Al switch places. You know, when Al becomes a leaper and Sam's the hologram. That's the first episode I learned. Al's last name. Look, I'm sure it was said before, but I kind of missed it those other times. But this episode, I didn't miss it. When, when Al, mostly his memory gets squashed. He, they asked him when he says, "You, you think I don't remember my name? I'm about to bet on it." He goes, like, "Okay, I know my name. What is it? It's Al. My name is Al." And he's like, "Al, what?" And Al, what? <laughs> Beckett. My name's Al Beckett. And Sam says, it's Calavici. You mean I'm not Beckett? No! Who's Beckett? I'm Beckett! <laughs> that was the first time I learned Al's last name. <laughs> now, and episodes were pretty good. At times, the series felt like an anthology series. You know, um, you know that we see each each um, each episode takes place in a different time period and people's problems, with the exception of the two main characters, Sam and Al. And 
and, at, and Sam had to right a wrong in that time period in order to leave. Sam never treated it like just an assignment. He showed he's a very caring guy. He really cared about the people he's helping. I mean, he didn't... And I thought it was... That was good acting by uh, Scott Bakula. And, and then, as for Al's backstory, um, I liked the, the episode where he leaps in the body of a cop in 1969 where he was supposed to help this widow... A little spoiler alert here. He was supposed to help this widow tell her her husband is uh, alive, waiting for her. Well, she she thinks her husband's dead, but Al tells her tells him to tell her that her husband is alive. He's just a prisoner. So Sam helps this. So Sam tries to help this woman out, only to discover that the widow is that the the wife is actually. Al Kel Al's wife. And uh, that comes back into play later in the series. Um, but we'll get to that. And, uh, and so it's kind of sad. Al was kind of using Sam to better, to better his life. <laughs> so he pulls on that rule, you can't change your own lives. And Al's like, please, I love her. She was my only one real love. My other, that's why my other marriages didn't work out. <laughs> sad. But the real truth was he wasn't there to help that help that army wife who's Beth. There's, he was there to save his partner. It's, you know that was the first episode we didn't, and we see Al and his wife dancing. Well, he's he's a hologram. He's dancing with her. She's like it's like he's a ghost and all that stuff. Kind of reminded me of Patrick Swayze's ghost. Uh, that's the first episode we don't see Sam. Leap, we see Al leap instead. I mean, Sam leaps, but Al leaps with him. So that that's what happened, and that and that does come back into play later in the last episode. I think I think my favorite one of my favorite moments with Sam and Al is when Al shows up. He's in a suit, and Sam's asking, "Did somebody die?" No. Oh, oh, you mean one wearing this suit? No, actually, my second, no, my third, no, 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 my fourth wife is suing me for alimony. Oh, so that's why you got to dress so, so, and Sam and Al said, boring, if that's the word you're choosing to describe it. Yeah, see. <laughs> and the series was pretty good. It showed, uh, I like, I also like the episodes he crossed paths with celebrities, like, uh, well, in Kamikaze Kid, he came across, he crossed paths with Michael Jackson, which I think was totally inaccurate because I don't think Michael Jackson was dancing like that at three years old because it was 1961. Michael Jackson was three years old in 1961. They show this kid dance. This kid looked five or six. <laughs> but you got to play on the his. You got to play on that. He cro he met he crossed paths with Woody Allen, Donald Trump, Stephen King in a few episodes. Won't say when he does cross paths with those, but it's just. Memorable. Oh, let's not forget Sylvester Stallone. That's that was a pretty memorable one too. <laughs> now episodes in the we're kind of getting dumb in the last season. I didn't bother to watch much of it. I mean, I didn't watch the Doctor Ruth episode. Ooh, uh, that, that that looked dumb. I also didn't watch much of. Uh, who else did he leap into? Um, Of the vampire. Ugh, I hate it. I didn't even bother to watch how that episode turned out. That episode looked dumb from the start. A vampire? Are you kidding me? But I did like uh, the... The last... Okay, I'll get to the last episode in a minute. I'll talk about the waiting room, where... After we saw young Al in the waiting room, after that they would start showing more of the... Of the of the waiting room and the bodies they were in, which I thought was pretty cool. I mean, my other favorite is when Al leaps, uh, sorry, Sam leaps in the body of a serial killer holding a family hostage. But on the other end of that spectrum, we see the killer, the real killer in the body of Sam escaping the, escaping the project. <laughs> and that was, that was, and that was a, that was a pretty cool episode. 
But I didn't didn't bother to watch the Doctor Ruth or the the vampire episode. Yes, I saw the Elvis episode. I gotta admit, when he was in the body of Elvis before he was famous, which I thought was pretty it was a pretty good episode. We get to see. I love watching Scott Bakula do his Elvis thing, and that that was pretty good. And um, now let's go on with the last episode where he is stuck in his diner, and he sees his own reflection. <laughs> And he sees people in that diner from past leaps, which, which was which is pretty good. You always guess it's like Seinfeld, where all the guest star, some of the guest stars, well, maybe all the guest stars come back into play. <laughs> and um, what other? Oh, and and there was this bartender played by Bruce McGill, who you, who they keep thinking is God, but. It's sort of hinted that that he's God, but it's never really referenced that he is God. And um, I heard Donald P. Donald, Donald P. Belsorio hired Bruce McGill because he looked like his father. In fact, you see a picture of, of Donald P. Belsorio with father, and he wanted to think if you look behind the photo, you, you think it's the same guy. <laughs> and I, towards the end of that episode, Sam starts to have regret that he didn't help. Al and his widow in that previous episode, his, his wife Beth, I mean, not his widow, because he was there to help the cop, and Sam regrets not helping Al in that part, so Sam had a choice, go home or help Al's wife Beth and keep on leaping, so Sam chose to help Al's wife and, and keep on leaping, he says, he just leaps in that time, she's scared, goes, look at I just want to tell you something. What? I'll start with a story. Where does it end? Only you decide that. And he's like, what What do you want to tell me? Al's alive and she's crying tears of joy. And then the, and then the, the lines read that she never remarried. She waited for Al and they, and they, they have four daughters and celebrated the 39th wedding anniversary. As for Sam Beckett, Never returned home. Now, I won't lie, I hated that ending at first. I thought it was just, I felt it should have had a better ending. But I guess looking back on it, I guess it was a, I guess it ended pretty well. I thought that was a pretty honorable thing for Sam to do. He knows Al had a very troubled life, and he, and it all started when he came back from Vietnam and Beth and left him and married another man because she thought he was dead and I mean Al was his good friend but Al deserved so much better he felt and uh, and it's a very noble thing what Sam did I mean he sacrificed his own happiness so Al could have his and it was a very noble thing to do but there was a line cut out there was a there was a scene cut out of that which I don't know why they cut it out they just where Beth and um and, and, and Al are still where see are still searching for Sam and that time period says I'll never give up on him he would have ended more hopefully but they decide to cut that out <laughs> so that's that's how I uh, so that's my talk on the, the 80s 90s show quantum leap joyful time traveling series. I didn't watch much of the Lee Harvey Oswald episode, um, but because that was just only done because Donald P. Balsario, when he was a young cadet in 1959, actually met Lee Harvey Oswald, you know, four years before he became known as the JFK assassination, and he thought that uh, Oliver Stone's JFK was caca. So he wanted to put his own spin on it. So, but. Uh, didn't really see much of that episode, so I don't want to say anymore. Quantum Leap was a good show. I mean, I mean, they were all weren't the greatest of all episodes, but they were pretty good. It was a pretty good series, and and it's coming back to NBC. I think on Peacock, I think, and also on Peacock. I don't know what's in store for the new Quantum Leap. Hope hopefully it's going to be good. I don't know if how much Scott Bakula is going to be involved in it. And since Dean Stockwell passed away, his character's probably going to get a mention. 
but we'll have to look and see. And we all love the theme song. Yeah, that theme just kind of gets into your head. All right. Bye-bye. Have a, have a good one.